All right, let's get into the teaching today and uh, we'll look at it together. Will you please turn your Bible to Hebrews chapter 11? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well. I hope you've been able to find a place to attend as a small group where you belong to. Hebrews chapter 11. All right. So, in this month of November, we're starting a very new and powerful series on the supernatural. So, we're starting a new series on the supernatural. We're starting a new series on the supernatural. And it's very powerful. Second service was really powerful. If you want to share with your friends online, it's a good time to ask them to join and to share this together. All right. So, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. And, and the title of the teaching is The Asian Secret of Supernatural Power. Asian secrets of what supernatural power hallelujah hallelujah so one of the things I one of the things I get to notice is this you know one of the things I get to notice is this there are people that struggle with their confidence in God there are people that struggle with their faith so there are people that um if they have a challenge they just can't really believe God that God will take care of them it's a difficult thing for them to do they they they, they know in their mind that God can do it but in practical reality they are not sure if god can do it for them or not so we're going to speak into that today we're going to speak into that today praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah so hebrews chapter 11 verse 32 one of my favorite and most challenging verses in the bible he says what more shall i say then for time will fail me to tell you of gideon and of barak and of samson and of jephthah and of david and of samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdom, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mount of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. The Bible says, women received their dead back to life, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may accept what? A better resurrection. See, this, so this teaching, this teaching is help really get towards us living a supernatural life. And I'm saying so to you because very often you will come to that point where you will ask yourself, does God really answer prayers or he doesn't? You will get to that point where you ask yourself, what is really going on? You're going to get to that point from time to time. And, and at the root of it, at the root of it will be this. You are looking for evidences in your life that prove that God exists. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When God made the, in Genesis chapter 1, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, when God made the heavens, it made what the heavens and the earth. God always made things in two dimensions. There's the natural dimension, which is the earth. And there's what? There's the supernatural dimension, which is the heaven. And I'm saying this to you because, because, you know, because when you're dealing with frustration and you look at yourself and you're like, you know what? I need answers and the natural cannot help you. How can you be able to really access the supernatural? There are people that have problems that there is no natural solution for. Sometimes it's a fact that you really need this huge capital to start your business. And this huge capital is there to start your business. But really, in a very simple way, you can't just find yourself believing for it. You know, you say, I need this huge capital. You can't see it happen. There are some people that go to the hospital and the doctor says, I'm sorry. There's not, I mean, the, the, there's, a, there's a testimony very close to my heart. One of our leaders in church, they went to the hospital and the doctor said, your husband, the sperm, it's zero. It's not as if he has low sperm count. It's zero. That there's zero count in the sperm. That all his personality is just liquid. <laughs> the lady was devastated. And the man said, let's have faith. We began to pray. They gave him drugs. It didn't improve one bit. We began to pray. And when we prayed, he came back and went to the hospital. And the doctor said, we don't know what you did. But your sperm count has come back to normal. <laughs> to show 
where they were, they wanted to go and do two tests just to confirm it. I'm saying that to you because there will, there, there will be situations in your life where natural things will become very difficult to help. But the good thing is this, we have supernatural help. That's the good thing. We have supernatural help. If doctor says we can't help you, God can help you. If your business partner says we can't help you, God can help you. It's very powerful. So some of you here, you're dealing with, you know, you're dealing with frustration. And the reason why you're frustrated is simple. Because what you're doing is not adding to the results you want. I'm saying to you that the supernatural can intervene and bring you exactly the results that you require. That's what I'm saying to you today. That the supernatural can do that for you. Let's turn our Bible to Numbers chapter 17. Verse 2. The Bible says this, and this is one of, this, in my opinion, what I think is one of the, one of the top, maybe five, ten miracles of the Bible. This is my opinion, what I think it is. Can, can I have the rod? Can I have the walking stick? And God wanted to show them something, so God gave them a walking stick. Okay, so this is working right now. Thank you. So, so God, God, God gave them a walking stick, and this is what God said. This is very powerful. God says, you shall take, verse 2, speak unto the children of Israel and take each one of them a rod according to the house of their father and of all their princes according to the house of their fathers. So rod write down every man's name upon his rod. Then thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their, ho- for the head of the house of their fathers. He says this, And thou shalt bring them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the temple where I will meet it. It shall come to pass that every man's rod whom I shall choose. I'm um, sorry, it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose, it shall blow them, and I would I will make it to cease from me. The murmurings of the children of Israel whereby they murmur against you. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel and said, Every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece. For each rod one, according to their father's house, twelve rods, and the rod of Aaron was amongst their rods. The Bible says, And Moses held up the rod before the Lord in the tabernacle of the weakness verse 8 and this is what i want to say watch this now everybody had the rod the rod is not something like you know the rod is not something you know like it's just a rod it's what they used to walk it's not like a big thing it's 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 wood that is dead the wood is dead some of them have used the rod for 20 years there's no life on the rod god says everybody bring your rod so they put the rod and put their names on it. So can, see, see the next thing. The Bible says in the next verse, and all Moses did was to take the rod and put it where? Moses put it in the presence of God. God says, leave it in my presence. Glory to God. See what happened the next day. Hey! Ha ha! Ha ha! Who is like my God? Ha, yeah, 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 yeah. See, you need to know who your God is. You need to know who your God is. Who is like my God? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, always doing wonders. They took rods and put in the tabernacle. What happened the next day? Read your Bible. Listen to me. You must learn to you must learn to say things like this: the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob is my God. When you say things like that, it's not as if you are saying that it's tied to them. You say, by what he did. Sometimes you will hear me pray. I will say, the God of the prophet of old. What I'm calling to remembrance is what he did to the prophets. How he brought out water out of the rock. How he prayed the way. He made an express in the Red Sea. That's the God I'm serving. Someone say, hallelujah. Because sometimes life almost wants to convince you that your God is not powerful. Life wants to tell you that there's nothing God can do. But no, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Moses, the God of Elijah, the God of Elisha, the God of Samuel, the God of Moses, the God of Elijah, the God of Samuel, of Isaiah, of Jeremiah, of Nahum, of Ezekiel. This is a God I serve. The God of the prophets. 
Ah, do you know what the God of Elisha did? Elisha was dead. His body had decayed. They were going into battle. They, as they were going, sorry, they were going to bury a man. As they were going to bury a man, they saw battle in front. The, the nearest graveyard was Elijah's own. They took the dead man and threw him into the grave. The Bible says, as soon as the dead man's body touched the bone of the prophet, ah, yeah, 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 he came back to life. No prayer was offered, just the power of God. Glory to God. Just the power of God. Someone says, ah, the year is over. Everything is finished. Calm down. Can I talk to you? How long did God used to make heaven and earth? Huh? I can't hear you. Huh? Six days. He rested on the seventh day. Yes or no? Let's say I must make it seven days. What you want, is it up to heaven or earth? And you think that eight weeks is not enough for Jehovah. You are sleeping. The year is not over. We just started. Are you here? They say, okay, let's take the rod. Let's take the, they put the rod there. Let's read. Hey. And it came to pass, not the next year, on the morrow. Moses went into the tabernacle of witness. And behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi had budded. Budded means he had leaves. Not only did he have leaves, he had brought four buds. He was having buds. Hey, hey. He had blossomed and yielded what? He had produced fruits. Do you know how long it would take to bring almonds? They didn't even pray. Hey, Bakora Satanda. They didn't even pray on the rod. All they had to do was to put the rod in the presence of God. There's something just staying in church. There's something just staying on that worship. You know, you don't know what is happening to you. You don't know what is happening. You don't know what is happening, but somebody is taking over your soul. I've seen people that said, I didn't even know when the tumor disappeared. Are you here? I didn't even know when the tumor disappeared. It's this is amazing. See, many of you, your business is like that rod is dry. No fruits. Bring your business, put it on the altar. Bring your career, put on the altar. Bring your job, put on the altar. Just, just let the presence of God come upon it. Let the presence of God come upon it. Why? This is a principle of the supernatural. What's the principle of the supernatural? The supernatural is superior to the natural. It created the natural and can control the natural. It's amazing. When we start talking like this, we're talking about supernatural results. These are results that default human explanation. They default human logic. In the first service, there was a couple just sitting over there. And as I was speaking, I just saw, you know, and I remember because your sister was on stage four, terminal cancer. And when she was on stage four, terminal cancer, they live in Lekki. The son lives on the mainland. She said, sister said, I'm moving to your house because next level, every day I'll be there. He said, I'm coming. I'm not praying on, I'm coming every day. They told me two months ago, she went back to the hospital. Doctor gave a certificate. Cancer clean. Cancer clean. Cancer clean. Doctors could not help, but that's what human said. That's the word God said. You look at yourself, you say, how will I raise the hundred million needed? He said, it's not by power. It's not by might. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. Glory to God. Look, look at um, one of our pastoral leaders here. Both of them, the couples, the knowledge. The sister diagnosed with full-grown cancer. They traveled to India. Before they went to India, you were the one that brought her to my office. I said, let's pray. We prayed. By the time they got to India, doctors, they kept them in the hospital to wait extra time. When they kept them, the sister said, hey, this thing seems to be worse. Now what they thought in Nigeria. But when they came out, it was different. The doctor said, the sample they sent from Nigeria is fully loaded with cancer. He said, but you that you are here, you don't have any choice of cancer. He 
see, that's the confusion. Because we have you and you. This is out of your body. This is, in, this is you. And the lady said, I know what happened. Before pastor prayed for me, they had removed the sample. By the time the healing came, it touched my body. The sample was out. I, I mean, I, I was going to a testimony of a lady. She lived rough when she was young and her womb was removed because of a lot of complication from abortions. And she came and said, God has spare parts. Because I have a car. Every car manufacturer has spare parts. Phones have spare parts. How come the crate of everybody doesn't have spare parts? I know that I made a mistake, but I'm forgiven. He said, let God give me spare parts. There was prayer. In five months, we saw her. Boom. That's the power of God. Someone says, can you take up this word? Someone says, why is it important to talk about the supernatural? I'll tell you the reason why today. Number one, if you don't talk about the supernatural, people will not believe in it. And that's the truth. Because people are very scared that mm, I don't want to get it wrong. So I better avoid it. But the way people get it right is by we teaching about the supernatural. And especially some people that are very logical. They're like, oh, this doesn't make sense. One plus one equals two, two plus equals four. How, what is supernatural? The same way the natural has principles that guide it, the supernatural also has principles that guide it. We just need to understand it. So the first reason why the supernatural is this, to help people be exposed. Because they are, listen to me, the result I'm praying to God for you to have, you can't achieve it by yourself. You need influence beyond yourself. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Let's read that. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Let's read about the spirit world and the supernatural. See what it is. Hebrews 11 verse 3. Oh, glory to God. Through faith, we what? We understand that the worlds were what? Framed by the word of God. So that the things we see were what? Hey, he said, the material things we see came from the spiritual world. Watch this now. If the material things we see came of the spiritual world, the spiritual world is superior to the material world. And if the spiritual world is superior to the material world, the spiritual world can what? Can regulate the material world. Yes, sir. It's a remote control effect. Where's my remote control? Let me show you what I mean. This remote control. It can work with this, right? So watch this. How did it come on? Because remote control. That's supernatural. We don't see it, but we feel it. Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, then I change the channel. I move it here. Functional available. I, I can change the channel. I can increase the volume. I can increase the volume. Things happen in natural. People wonder, but they are not touching it. But we are touching it. We are touching it from another realm. Yes, so they say you can't have a child. <laughs> we say that's okay. We have the most control. We touch it. They say you can't get the business. We have the most control. We touch it. The question is that do you know how do you know what remote control the physical? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you here? There are laws of the spirit. There there are laws of the spirit. When you see people joining Illuminati, joining this cult, saying they're using tortoise for Yahoo Plus, you think they're stupid? They're doing those things because when you see people on Instagram saying, I will give you one chicken if you eat it, the man you follow will give you $10,000, will give you a car, and will post testimony. You think they're stupid? They're not stupid. It's because it's working for them. But all those things are useless compared to the power of God. Because the only reason why there's a fake 1,000 naira note is because there's an original 1,000 naira note. The only reason why there's fake demonstration of power is because there's true power. And when power, jump power, lesser power go back. Do you know why a lot of Christians, see, a lot of Christians struggle with their faith? They struggle with their faith because they've not had encounter that deepens their conviction. Why do you need supernatural? You need encounters that deepens conviction. You will not be saying the pastor said. You say, I know, I felt, I touched, I handled. This happened to me. Encounters that convince you. Exodus 4. Moses said, sir, if I go back to my people, how will they send me? He said, take your rod, put it on the floor. 
He said, if they see your rod turn to serpent, they will know you are different. That means that the supernatural brings result that shows divine backing. Everybody will know that. No, 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 no. If you attack this person in business, it always passes fire. They know because they've seen the pattern. They've seen you. They've attacked you before. They know this one is untouchable. They've seen the pattern. It's clear. It's obvious. Glory to God. See, you know, a lot of Christians, this is, and you say, I'm so discouraged, I'm so tired. The reason why I'm discouraged and tired is this, you don't have conviction. And what deepens conviction is encounter. Things will have happened in your life that will say, hey, God is with me. You yourself, you will know that God is with me. Let me give you some, some testimonies. When our church started in Bagada, Wait, there was this just in a settlement just behind. I mean, just people, people, some apartment just came up behind our church. And one of the guys, one of the um, the family there, their mother came. The mother came from um, from Ibadan to come and nurse their baby. After just started to nurse the baby, she was grandma doing grandma duties, and she came to the church one Sunday and said, "Wow, is I want to see you." I said, "Here, my ma. I mean, small church." He said, just let you know God is with you. I said, why? He said, when I was coming to Bada, I prayed that God would show me the church to go to. He said, I saw a vision. He said, I saw the church with a projector. Describe how our church was. He said, that's what I saw in the spirit. He said, when I came back, my children said, we should go to their own church. When I got to the church, I said, this is not the church God said I should go to. He said, because you guys don't have projector in front. He said, the church I saw, I saw projector here, projector there. He said, he said the other day we were too late to come to church. We came to this church. It was exactly what I saw in the vision. Listen to me. As a young pastor, I just knew God sent me. You need it in your life. When things that will happen in business, that you know I'm not here by myself. Are you hearing me? You will know that "Mm -mm, my life is not ordinary. You know why that's important? So that when you go through tough time, you have a reference point that says, "Uh uh-uh, I didn't send myself. See, there are things that will happen in your business. Say, no, if God did this before, he will do it again. He will do it again. He will do it again. That same period, one of the time, I think we about 1700. One guy drove on the street. One man and his family drove on the street and told him, I want to see the pastor. I mean, when, when you're patching 50, 70 people, how busy are you? So I came downstairs, seeing from the, it was an Itri hall. I came downstairs. And the man said to me, um, I've been driving here. And since I've been driving here, God has been telling me to give this church money. I don't know what you guys do. I don't know what you guys do. But God has been telling me to give you church money. And I said, This is the money. And I said, It was not about the money, it was the fact that. You mean God can send people that have never known me, never seen me, don't know my name and say bring money? There is a confidence it puts in you. The reason why you are not consistent is that you don't have that conviction yet that this thing can happen for you. Many people struggle with conviction. So any small thing, the doctor says it's almost final. Any small thing with the finals, it's almost final. The child is sick, it's almost final. It's up the book. You don't have there's nothing in your there's no track record in your life of what God has done for you. But if you know that when my business wanted to have a breakthrough, I needed 150 million, that money came by the hand of God. There was no way I could have gotten it. Now that you need one billion, you know what you say? The God that did 150, it would also do this one. That was listen to me, that was what David understood. David had killed lion, bear, and tiger. He said, The Lord, that, he said, When I killed the lion, it was not by power. When I killed the bear, it was not by power. When I killed the tiger, it was not by power. Who is this? Who is what? This uncircumcised Philistine. Who had Saul killed before? He had killed nobody. Saul did not have a record of God's power. David had a record of God's power. This is why this is important. You get to your office, they say, eh, They've do some, do, do something on your seats because you're in civil service. If you sit down there, you will die. You don't say, oh, Pastor, eh, let me come to, my, come to my office and come and pray. Because you have not seen power, sir. We will not come and pray on chair. We will leave the work of God and be praying on chair. Both the chair and the pastor, they are not very intelligent. But when you've seen the power, you will command it to be dissolved. Are you here, somebody? doctor says i'm sorry you can't have a child he said that's not the first time you say that and this uh, that's not the first time doctors will say that and that's not the last time they will say that 
and that's when the first time they will say that and they will have children and you're one of them and the reason why is that you have seen something what does the supernatural do for you you know what does it do for you it helps you become confident in the power of god paul says it this way it, peter says this way he said the things we've seen that our hands have handled they say um, the way you see this your child may not survive he said not my child 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 the bible says we will not bury our young that's what the supernatural does it helps you develop confidence in god many of you right now they say pray for something they say hey, i'm 40 who will marry me what this job this business it's you're always seeing the impossible it's difficult for you to see the miracle of god glory to god the supernatural is the proof of god's divine backing it's a seal it's a seal of god's divine backing it's the sign that shows that god is with you it's the sign that shows that god is with you the second thing supernatural does it deepens conviction first corinthians 2 verse 4 paul says that that we're preaching and teaching first corinthians 2 verse 4 it says that our preaching and teaching will not be an enticing words of one's men's wisdom but in the demonstration of the spirit and power verse 5 says that your faith may stand in the power of god let me read something to you in the book of romans romans chapter 4. hey somebody say hallelujah the supernatural has remote control effects. They don't see what you are doing, but it's working. That's why people that have real power don't make noise. They say, they say, they say don't worry, you, you, you shall see my God. People that have power don't stamp their fingers. What does that mean in the spirit? What, what does this mean? You will see my God. It means something in the spirit. People that have real power don't stamp their finger. They say, is that what you said? They say, that's fine. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> because they know what to do. Yes. From today, you will know what to do. When someone say, I will show you, you say, show me. Okay, show me. He say, your child is this. He say, okay, do what you can. Hebrews chapter 4. Sorry, Romans chapter 4. Are you ready? Verse 18. Hey! I love this. Bible says, and Abraham woke against hope, believing what? What does that mean? How can you believe in hope against hope? What does that mean? This is what that means. Natural hope says it's finished. Abraham says, there's natural hope. There's supernatural hope. Natural hope is when it's looking okay. It's okay. That's natural hope. Supernatural hope says, it doesn't matter how it looks. These eyes will come out. He says, who against hope believed in hope? Ah. 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 Who against hope believed in hope? They said, you are 40, will marry you. He said, that's the thing. I've agreed. Who against hope believe in hope? Hope said, I can't help you. Abraham said, that's not what I'm waiting on. I'm waiting on what? Supernatural hope. I mean, one of the testimony that I heard, the lady had HIV and she got healed. Science says we can't help you. It's HIV. See, natural, lim- natural has its limits, but the supernatural has no limits. Natural says we can help you if it's malaria, but if it's hepatitis, HIV, things like that, we can't help you. Supernatural says all things are possible to him that believe it. Natural says that if you have connection, you will get the money and contract. Supernatural says all things are possible to him that believe it. Either you have or not, you will get it. Supernatural is so powerful. All things are possible to him that be. He didn't say some things. He said all things are possible. He didn't say few things. He said all things are possible to him that believe it. I don't know if you heard the testimony of Son, the um, son that the husband had left home for months. As we began to pray, the husband returned home. That's the power of the supernatural. Because the supernatural has no limits. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So the supernatural is the proof of divine backing. The supernatural deepens conviction. And without conviction, consistency is difficult. And the supernatural (laughs) brings results 
where human capacity says impossible. Supernatural brings results where human capacity is impossible. Let's read one more scripture and we'll close from here. Numbers chapter 17, verse 2. Oh my God. Someone say hallelujah. Let's read. I love this. No, 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 no. Is, is that, that's, what I want to, um, that's not where I want to read. Actually. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Yes, Exodus chapter 17, rather. Ah, oh, life is spiritual. Though. I'm telling you, life, there's a natural dimension. There's a spiritual dimension. I, I, were you, I, I'm not sure if you heard the testimony I gave on, on midweek service. This was about 20 years ago when I just started preaching. And I went to preach in this within church. And the pastor brought this lady to me. And the lady, nice Christian lady, and she said she's not going to get married. And I said, why is she not going to get married? They said it was very simple because she has had about three or four engagements. They always break up with her because they will see her turn into a lion and attack them. And I said, oh, that's wrong. Like, I'm like, but that can be coincidental. And she said, it's not coincidental because the lady said that she also sees the lions, that there are actually six lions and she's seventh of them. I said, oh, wow, okay. You are the seventh of them. I said, that's a good idea. <laughs> so I now said, okay, let's meet together and pray. The pastor said, we've been praying. Nothing has happened. And of course, there are reasons why that happens. Because you can be praying and not pray well. Nothing happens. Okay, so we prayed. Next thing, they brought her to me. It was actually in my house. You know, it was my parents' house, actually. And um, she ex lady explained to me that sometimes she sees three lions on, your, on her right, three lions on her left, and she's a seventh lion like that. And the last relationship that the husband had a dream, um, the fiancé had a dream, the lion attacked the husband attacked the mother-in-law. They have similar dreams. They felt uncomfortable, broke the relationship. And that's happened three times. And I said, well, this looks like a case of demonic oppression. Let's deal with it. So I told the lady, I said, let me just give an example of, uh, let me use one of the choir. Um, what can I use? Yep, yeah, yeah. Maxam, come, come, come. Yeah. Let me use someone. So, so I told the lady, she came with her pastor and I said, stay, no, she stay like this. It was like this. I remember very well because I remember, I mean, I was sitting on the chair here. She was sitting on the chair over there. She stood like that. I could tell, you know, just by the spirit of God that she was going to get wild. So I, I looked at her this way and I said, I just pointed my, my fourth finger and I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that you spirit that's oppressed, I command to come out in Jesus' name. And when I said that, this is the power of authority. When I say, come out in Jesus' name. And this is why they could not cast her out all along because I could tell the demon was intelligent. As I said that, the lady was here at giving her distance because I expected some kind of manifestation. You know, she just went like this, just, went, just like this. Just went, like she's a gentle, quiet lady. You know, if you're from redeemed background, you know how redeemed people, you know, were the redeemed like big scares, you know, that kind of thing. You know, so she just went, whoa! And charged towards me just like like in a thing like she just roared like a lion and when she did that <laughs> i took the first step backward i took the second step backward because i was thinking what to do and the voice of unbelief said what do you do now just say in just name come on come on come on but i said no you can't say that because if you believe it came out the first time why are you repenting again So as he was charging, my spirit man took over and I just said, Demon, I've said out, and that means you are gone. The moment I said that, lady that was charging someone just went, Ooh, I just felt the floor. Bah! And that was the end of it. I saw her a year after she was married. Let me tell you something there. Sometimes when things stay, it's to help you convince you 
that they are not working. So when you now respond to it, so that's said, you see, you didn't believe what you were doing, so it will never work again. Sometimes, I haven't done everything. Ephesians says, stand. It says, I haven't done all to stand. You stand. And say, Lord, you have answered. I'm standing on it. That's all I'm doing. Lord, yeah. all you have to do is I, I prayed, I will go stay in Thanksgiving. I prayed, I will stay in Thanksgiving. I prayed, I will stay in Thanksgiving. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you. Okay, let's close, please. Ephesians, um, Exodus chapter 7. I want to close with the story. I said, the supernatural has a remote control effect. Have, have you ever been, have you, maybe when you were dating or maybe with your parents, have you ever been annoyed by someone that they changed the television station and you never knew that they had the remote control? And you just be watching and you see television changing, 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 changing. You're like, ha, what is wrong? And the person you'll be looking at, you know, meanwhile, they're the one changing it. Has that happened to you before? That's the most contrary effect. That's how I want to start living. You will change things in the office. You'll be looking like, mm. you'll be looking. Uh-uh. See what is happening. You say, hey, 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 it's happening. Meanwhile, you're the one that's changing it. Hallelujah. It's called what? Remote control. Remote control effect. I want to show you remote control in the Bible. Let's see. The Bible says, verse, chapter 17, verse 9 of Exodus. And Moses said to Joshua, choose out men and go and fight with Amalek. And tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with what? With the rod of God in my hands. See what the Bible says. And Joshua did. See, this is the two dimensions. This is where the mistake is. He said, Joshua, go and fight. Go and do the business strategy. Go and do the negotiation. Some people will say, because I'm praying, I'll know the negotiation. He said, no. Go and do the negotiation. Go and do the strategic planning. Go and do everything as you're going to do it. Look at the next line. It said, Joshua did as Moses had said and fought with the Amalek. Moses, Aaron, and all went to the top of the hill. Look at what the Bible says. Pastor Femi, Judge, Pastor Laya, will you come? You know, yeah. Yeah, just come. Yeah, the three of you, because I, I don't know who's going to be Moses now. Who's going to be all? Uh, Pastor, Pastor Femi, Judge, you look like Moses. You, you're the one that went to the street. Come stay here. Come stay here. Two of you come, 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 come stay right and left you have to face them yeah exactly good exactly this is moses this is all and this is aaron but you need the rod of the lord where's the rod of the lord thank you you need the rod of the lord the rod was not this simple it was quite heavy you know but you know it was quite heavy so, so see what the bible says so moses is carrying the rod the bible says this verse 11 look at what the bible says and it came to pass, as Moses held up his rod, what happened? Hold up the rod. You have to hold it. Ah, you don't, no, no, no. Have, with the two hand. Ah, you the two hand. Yes. As Moses held up the rod, what happened? It means as Moses held up the rod, remote control. From there, the rod was affecting marketplace. So all of a sudden, as Moses held up the rod, Israel was winning. Israel was winning. Isa was winning. Isa was winning. Isa was winning. Isa was winning. But Moses was getting tired. So he pulled down his hands. As soon as he pulled down his hands, Amalek winning, winning, winning. Someone says, what a coincidence. No, no. They observe spiritual pattern. When they observed it, see the next thing they did. Moses became very tired. See, Bible says this. <laughs> the Bible says, in verse 11, and it came to pass as Moses held up his rod, Israel prevailed, and when he let it down, Amalek prevailed. And Moses' hands were very heavy, and they, now, they, they took a stone and put it under him, and sat upon them, and Aaron and Moses stayed up his hands, one on the other side, the other on the other side, and his hands were steady unto the going down of the sun. And Joshua disconfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? He said, as they were in the negotiation room, you know, you know, some men or some women don't know how to be married. Your husband said, I'm going for negotiation. Say, honey, come. Is he kissed in it? Who is kids going to help in negotiation room? You, you know, I say, don't worry, you got it, you got it. That's not you, you know, it's not your God you be telling your husband. You say, honey, go, let me go and become like a rod. <laughs> 
in the old testament it was a physical rod in the new testament the rod is the word of god you go there with the bible you say the father in the name of jesus as honey is going and praying for him he gets a contract he comes up with a testimony in the name of jesus are you here somebody that's how it should be your wife is going for an interview babe i got you where is i got you going to help as wife is going as a husband you go there and if you feel as if the road is falling down go to your cell meeting look for your cell leader look for sister cell leader look for the married men look for the married women you hold the rod with me my wife has gone for an interview this job is what we want shaba cabos shaba cabos and they will just notice they were about to say no they were about to choose somebody else all of a sudden remote control function <laughs> hey i said remote control function it will just turn it will just turn somebody say amen praise god it's amazing this is powerful ah, that's why you must find a way to go to, this is why you must find a way to go to sell so that when you can't carry this alone there'll be brothers and sisters on your side that say let's join you you have been waiting for that approval you have been waiting for that approval that immigration document that husband that sister someone says hey girl it's you again no 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 as you are going we are there so from from they can't see us but we're influencing things in the boardroom they, they wonder the, the, the men will say you know i don't know what's happening but this conversation is not going as we planned you said you said yes sir i expected it so what am i you expected it not just because of our preparation because i prepared in the secret place thank you somebody say hallelujah someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah let me tell you something learn not to pray to correct mistakes learn to pray to avoid mistakes before it happens, Aaron, Moses, and all are lifting up their rods towards heaven. As they're going for the interview, they're saying, You go and come back with a testimony. You go and come back. Not that when you now come back, oh, see, see, see. That's a little spray. Why do you want to pray to reverse? What well, we can pray to influence in the first place? They say, um, The way you are, there's a strap problem with your hormones. There's a strike problem with this and this and this. So I understand. I need remote control. Cross, praise God. Have you not seen remote control before in all this African movie? They will tell one girl to rub powder. I said, rub powder. I just wink at her. Man, I say, oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. Praise God. I said, praise God. You need Moses, Aaron, and all. You need Moses, Aaron, and all. You know, one of the one politician joined next level prayer that morning. He had a political appointment, but they had used political games to knock him out. And guess what? This morning I was praying the next level, and he joined. As I prayed, I said, There's someone I mentioned this case. He said, As I mentioned it, he said, This was even their first time of joining. He said, He opened his wife's eyes, his wife opened the eyes, and said, Did they tell the pastor about us? And he says, Ah. How does Pastor even know we'll join or not? He said, the man is in Lagos. They are even not in Lagos. And we prayed. And we prayed and declared. And it was a prophetic word. One hour after what he had waited for four months happened, he was reinstated in his office one hour after. He called me. He said, Pastor, I'm not a new Christian. I've seen answer prayers. But in my life, I've never seen a prayer this fast to be answered. I said, what do you think our God is? Our God is not slow, so our God is sharp, sharp. Rise up, let us pray. Glory to God.